Did Canon just make the perfect camera for both professionals and creators? The Canon R6 Mark II does a few things that no other camera on the market is currently doing. And in some ways, it's actually better than the more expensive cameras out there. But it might not be right for everyone, and you have to make sure it has the right specs and features for you. So in this video, let's talk about why the Canon R6 Mark II is such a beast and why it's different than any other camera on the market today. It seems like cameras never give you exactly what you want. There's always a compromise in some way. A camera might be amazing at photos with a high res sensor, but usually they make compromises in video because of that sensor. And if it's really good in video, it usually has a low res sensor. There's always a compromise in some way. I've always wanted a camera that could do both photos and videos really well without compromise. And in the case of the Canon R6 Mark II, it all comes down to the sensor, processor, and design. Because this unique combination isn't found in any other camera out there today. If you want the best price on your Canon R6 Mark II, or the other cameras I mentioned, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. On the surface, the Canon R6 Mark II has a pretty standard sensor. It's 24 megapixels and it's a full frame sensor, but there is so much more to it. The pixel design and processing is completely new and this benefits both photos and videos. The most notable thing in photos is the large amount of dynamic range and latitude with the 24 megapixel sensor. A couple of times I had photos that looked completely unusable, too dark or too bright, but I was easily able to pull up the shadows, bring down the highlights and actually get great photos. And anyone that ever said 24 megapixels wasn't enough, I promise you, you can zoom in and adjust every little detail in your photos. And I was able to shoot video with literally zero noise or grain, even in low light conditions where I was shooting on the street with just one light. Despite the high resolution, the Canon R6 Mark II sensor is actually really good at high ISOs, even up to 12,800, as long as you use full stops of ISO at 800, 1600, and 3200. But the real test of any camera is the editing and color grading for your photos and videos. And the colors on the Canon R6 Mark II, along with the skin tones, are in this perfect sweet spot. The colors look true to life and the skin tones look deep and saturated. And pushing the colors and skin tones in Lightroom, I had very little noise or image breakdown. And in most cases, I actually found the in-camera skin tones looked better than anything I could do with them. And this was all without using any sort of denoising or sharpening tools. And as someone who loves spending hours in Lightroom editing, I never felt limited whatsoever. And this was thanks to the 14-bit RAW in photo mode and Canon C-Log in video mode. I will talk more about Canon C-Log 3 later in this video because there's a lot more to it. But even more important and even more impressive is the speed and accuracy that I was able to get from the R6 Mark II. And I put this camera through every single thing that a camera should struggle with. I was able to shoot a boxer throwing super fast punches with no problems at 12 frames per second mechanical shutter mode. The autofocus was locked on even in full screen autofocus mode. This is thanks to having over a thousand points of active phase detect autofocus points. And this was before I tried any sort of subject tracking or face detect. And then I tried some faster action shots at 40 frames per second electronic shutter mode, which is actually faster than standard video. And oh my God, this blew my mind. The 40 frames per second allows you to not miss a single frame. But this time I did use face detect. I was able to shoot an entire movement with my model and then use the exact single photo that I wanted to use for my photo. The Canon R6 Mark II is honestly great at shooting anything from fast cars to models to boxers. It can literally do it all. And the focus was tack sharp every single time. The Canon R6 Mark II does have this really powerful subject detect autofocus, which works on people, animals, cars, airplanes, insects, pretty much anything you can throw at this camera. And the autofocus works just as well in video mode, even in low light situations. I shot my model on the street with just one light, even at F2, the autofocus never really struggled. And the Canon R6 Mark II finally does the one thing that I and most of the video community has been begging for. Every camera with a high resolution sensor will always compromise when it comes to video because usually a camera can't process all those pixels. And it does this by either cropping into the sensor or dropping the video bitrate. And if a camera doesn't do that, it's usually because the camera has a low resolution sensor, the best example being the Sony FX3 that shoots 4K at 120 frames per second, but with a 12 megapixel sensor. So for the longest time, it's been pretty much impossible to find a camera that does both photos at a high resolution and video without making severe compromises until the Canon R6 Mark II finally did it. The R6 Mark II shoots full frame, 
4K video at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second with zero crop and zero data rate compromises. And because it's a high resolution 24 megapixel sensor, the 4K is actually super sampled from a 6K image. So your 4K video is effectively a 6K video with 6K detail and 6K clarity. And putting the Canon R6 Mark II head to head with something like the Sony FX3, which costs twice as much, you actually get a better image from the R6, whereas the Sony is only native 4K. And the R6 Mark II still shoots full HD up to 180 frames per second. As a slow motion aficionado, this is my favorite mode on this camera because despite being full HD, it still looks sharp and crisp. And honestly, 180 frames per second just looks beautiful. And you can shoot all of these frame rates and different modes in 10 bit color with Canon C Log 3. And within Canon C Log 3, you actually have different color gamuts like Cinema, Rec 709, and BT 2020. One thing I really like about C-Log3 is that Canon actually gives you an official conversion LUT to go from log to whatever color profile you want, making it much easier to edit with Canon C-Log3, whereas with my FX3, I usually have to look for third-party LUTs. Sony does not provide an official LUT. And the colors in C-Log3 really surprised me. And you don't really see cinematic and filmic colors like this in a mirrorless camera, except for maybe Fuji. They have this really soft, almost Kodak portrait feel to them for my film shooters out there. And just like photos, there's a ton of dynamic range and color flexibility in Canon C-Log3. Although the Canon R6 Mark II only shoots an IPB codec, which is more of a prosumer and enthusiast level codec. And for a high data rate codec, like Canon's All Eye, you have to upgrade to the Canon R5 or the Canon R5C. But the Canon All Eye codec is perfectly fine for freelance video makers, online content creators, anyone that's an enthusiast and maybe not doing professional on-set projects. But if you ever need a high data rate codec from your Canon R6, Canon actually has you covered. You can actually get 6K ProRes RAW up to 60 frames per second using an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja Plus. It's a really cheap external recorder to rent as a one-off if you ever have a big project. And if you bought one with the recorder, batteries, hard drives, it would still be under $800, which is cheaper than buying a Canon R5 or an FX3. Although your camera will become bigger with the Atomos Ninja recorder, but if you're doing a serious project, that shouldn't really be a problem. And speaking of big cameras, Usually mirrorless cameras like this have terrible design and ergonomics for professional use and for serious shooters. So how is the Canon R6 Mark II looking in terms of design? One thing that I love is that Canon added a switch to flip between photo and video mode and the settings don't carry over from photo and video so it's really like having two different cameras. And on the mode dial, you actually have three custom profiles. You can set them up for different shooting scenarios like high frame rate, low light, photos, portraits, whatever you want. And you can switch between them with just one click. And Canon did not forget about the beginners and people new to cameras. It also has automatic modes for portrait, food, nighttime, and sports. So if you're new to cameras, you don't really know what you're doing, it sets the camera perfectly for that shooting scenario. But apart from that, the ergonomics are actually what you would want in a pro level camera, despite this being a mid-tier camera. It has a nice robust solid grip, really solid build quality, great button layout, and a really intuitive and simple menu layout. And there's also a quick menu on the back of this camera that's also touch enabled, so you could technically use this camera with just touching. But there is a problem, and it's a pretty big one. This applies to the Canon R6 Mark II and every single Canon RF camera. Currently, Canon does not allow third-party companies to make lenses for the Canon RF mount. Everything that I shot in this video was actually shot with the high-end Canon Pro lenses like the Canon 28-70, Canon 85, Canon 16-35, and my personal favorite, the Canon 24-105, which is my go-to lens. And these lenses are amazing in terms of sharpness and quality, but let's be honest, they're pretty expensive and they actually cost more than the Canon R6 Mark II and I'm a YouTuber, I'm on a YouTuber budget. My personal solution has been to buy Canon STM primes, which are a lot more affordable. I currently have the 50 mil STM and I also have the 16 mil and 35 mil. These lenses aren't as sharp, but they're just as good when it comes to autofocus and the image quality is still stellar. But for a lot of serious professionals out there, I would actually recommend using the RF to EF adapter that Canon also makes and use Sigma lenses, which are disturbingly sharp, or the older Canon EF L series, which is also more affordable and you get pro level glass. So is the Canon R6 Mark II right for you and is it really the perfect camera? We're gonna do this part as a Casey Neistat questionnaire, mainly because I love his videos. Do you need full frame? 
Yes. Do you need 4K 60 without crop or compromises? That's also super sample from 6K. Yes. Is 24 megapixels enough resolution for you in terms of photos? If you answered yes, the Canon R6 Mark II might be the perfect camera for you. If you answered no and you want a higher resolution sensor closer to 33 megapixels or 45 megapixels, the A7 IV has a 33 megapixel full frame sensor and it shoots tremendous photos. However, it only shoots at 10 frames per second and in 4K 60, it crops. Whereas the Canon R6 Mark II does not crop in 4K 60 and it shoots at a much, much higher photo frame rate. However, the a7 IV is the exact same price as the Canon R6 Mark II. But if you want faster frame rates in photo mode and you do not want to crop your footage in slow motion, there are other options. Canon R5 and the R5C have a 45 megapixel full frame sensor that also allows you to shoot 8K video and 4K up to 120 frames per second, which is a lot more than the R6 Mark II can do. However, the Canon R5 and R5C are double the price of the Canon R6 Mark II, and you could probably buy two of these cameras for the price of one of those. Personally, I think the R6 Mark II is actually the perfect camera because it perfectly balances photo and video without making any compromises. And relative to how much cameras cost, it's actually really affordable. But if you want the best price on your Canon R6 Mark II or the other cameras I mentioned, make sure to check out the links in the description down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.